Welcome back, Richard. It's good to see you once again. How are you doing? I am over there. I am doing doing swell. Just okay. just swell. We're gonna <laughs> we have an interesting topic today. We could have called this one of life's great challenges. Yeah. Um, but instead we we entitled it Dads and Their Daughters. Yeah. What it's like for for uh for us to be raising daughters. You yeah. know a little bit about that, don't you? I, I I do. I'm uh, I'm, I'm a couple running several, around That's several cool. daughters. Um, but you know, we we had thought that we were going to move away from parenting onto another topic. But then you know, this there's this new article that came out that we that we saw, and so we thought we would kind of talk about some tips for um, for dads and their daughters, um, and right. and especially how to keep them close. Because you know, um, you know, there there are a lot of um, good and bad things, I suppose, <clears throat> when they talk about, you know, a daddy's girl, um, or daddy yeah. shoes and things like that. <clears throat> and I think that some of the recommendations or some of the suggestions in this, um, list are really important and really good to consider when looking at the relationship and that it, there's interactions between dads and their girls, their daughters. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, years ago, um, I met this woman, uh, really, a, a really intelligent, accomplished, confident. I had really never met anybody quite like her before. Um, she had a uh, well-educated attorney and started her own business and, you know, sold it to another company. And um, but also she was very kind and thoughtful and generous. The kind of the kind of woman, the kind of woman you want your daughters to become, you know, that but accomplished, but nice. And at the time, I had a very young daughter. She was maybe two or three at the time. And um, I had had two sons uh, and uh, had some experience with boys, but uh, this was my first foray into raising a daughter. And uh, one time we, we were together and I, I asked this woman, I said, "What? How, how did you become all that you are? I mean, I was teaching at a university, but I had never really met anybody like her. I said, how did you become this? And she said, my father. And I said, what do you what do you mean your father? And she said, I would sit in his lap and when I was a little girl and he would tell me how beautiful I am and how smart I am and how this I am and how that I am. She said, I attribute everything I became to getting those messages from my father. That stuck, that rang a bell, that, that, that hit a chord. And, um, and I said, remember that as you're raising your own daughter. Um, be, uh, that's what she attributed it to. Um, but then I learned that being a good father is walking that fine line between being too involved with your child and not being involved enough. And that's, we've talked about that many times that there's this Goldilocks mm -hmm. uh, pursuit that parents have this, 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 we want to get it just right. So there's some balance between um, independence and dependence and attachment and detachment. And, and we're always walking that fine line between being a disciplinarian, but being their greatest source of support. Right. right. So it's, it's very difficult. And I think it's especially difficult with daughters, with dads and daughters, because we, there are things that we cannot fathom when right. it, in, in, in our daughters and, and in our wives and in our partners. Uh, absolutely. And I, and I think that as we go through this, this list of things, um, I think it's important to, to say going into it that th these are, these are good things with, with all kids, with, um, whether, yeah. whether you, it's your son or your daughter or, or a stepchild or, or, or whoever, these are, these are good things, but they're especially important between the, the dad and uh, a dad and a daughter, because it, it's not, some of these are not necessarily things that we, that a lot of dads do intuitively. It's not something that they, they automatically do because, um, you know, I, I think that we, we still, many fathers still have some of those stereotypes of, well, you know, I have to protect my daughter. I have to, you know, do we, we have to use, you know, um, 
soft gloves and stuff when we're handling, you know, all that kind of stuff that we have to be all this cautious. But at the same time, we want our daughters to be confident. And, you know, as you described this woman that you were talking about. And so I think some of these are good to remember, especially when it comes to, to raising our daughters. That no, you're absolutely right. We should be doing this with everybody, but we have a, you know, I had my two sons and everybody kept saying, Oh, Richard, you have to have a daughter. You just don't know what it's like. You it, it's a special experience. And when I had a daughter, I said, oh, okay, now I understand what they're talking about. But you do want to protect them. Mm -hmm. And you do want to make sure that everything is perfect for them. And you do want to make sure that they become everything. And so there is there is this, at, and you don't really know how your daughters think. I mean, I, I'm not pretending that I know how any of my kids think, but I know that Dads and daughters have this special relationship. The other thing is, is that your daughter, and, and if you don't know this, if you're a father and you don't know this, you need to learn it. Your daughter is going to look to you to learn how to be a wife and a mother. Mm -hmm. uh, she can look to her mother too, but right. you are going to be the ideal She's right. going to be watching you all the time to decide what she, who she is going to choose for a mate. Right. And how you treat her mother is something that she's going to be watching because that tells her how she should expect to be treated. Right. And so there's, there's an enormous, she's watching you to learn how to become her. Right. And that is where that's an enormous responsibility that you have. Right. Yeah. So, how do you how do you accomplish this? Well, the, we found this article. We stumbled upon this article, um, and 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 I think there's some good advice here, as you said, Bernie, that it's useful advice with um, with any child, but it's especially appropriate as dads and daughters forge this very complicated relationship. Absolutely. So the, and the first thing on the list is, is again, something that, that's important for all kids, but especially in this situation, and that is guys need to work to be a good listener. And, and I think that that's something that's really difficult for a lot of the dads that I work with, because, you know, dads, you know, let's, let's be honest, our, our, many of us grew up where your role is to, there's a problem, you fix it. You know, yeah. it's just, you know, just tell me what's wrong and I'll, I'll, I'll fix it and make it, make it better. Right. And, and sometimes you just have to listen. You, you have right. to stop talking, stop offering solutions, stop solving right. the problems and just, um, just let them talk and, and listen. You know, you might even want to say dads are from Mars and daughters are from Venus. Yeah. You know, remember that, that. Do, the women think about things differently. Men, just give me the, I'll solve the problem. Tell me what it is and I'll take care of it. That's not what our daughters want or need. Right. Absolutely. And, and what goes along with that is the second one is, you know, when it comes to rules and, and limits, you know, have a conversation about them. Right. I think that, you know, a lot of times what we do is as parents, we just say, you know, this is the rule. And, it's like that's the end of the discussion. Um, but sometimes, you, you know, the rules can be can be a discussion. We can we can talk about what those expectations are. We can talk about, you know, well, you know, should should this be the curfew or should this be the curfew? And, you know, well, how, how can we navigate through some of those things? And so we should we should have a discussion about some of these and, and negotiate through some of these things, because when you especially um, in these kinds of circumstances with our daughters, you know, when you can negotiate and you can work through it and you come to a mutual agreement, right? they're going to be much more likely to to go along with it than they are if you just say this is what it is and there's no no discussion. Yeah, years ago, um, when uh, generations ago in teaching, we would we would say to young teachers, don't have too many rules. Right. Yeah, you know, have one or two. The, but everything else is procedures. You know, it's not a rule that we go. It's a procedure that we follow. And most, uh, and all those procedures are negotiable. I mean, it's not life or death. There are some things that are life or death. And you might have a couple of rules about those. But everything else you should be negotiating um, because there are ways of doing things. And if your children are doing them safely and well, then you don't need a lot of rules. 
you know, just but, but you have ways of doing things, but they're not hard and fast rules. So don't start out with a bunch of rules and dictate those to any child because that's not going to turn out well. Absolutely. No, number three is, is is to be generous with praise. And again, I, I think this is important for for lots of kids, but especially with with daughters because between dads and daughters because. Mm -hmm. um, as you said at the beginning of the podcast or just a few minutes ago, you said that, you know, girls look at you to see how what they're going to say, look for in a mate, you know, um, and, and and boys do that with moms. You know, they're looking at their moms and, and looking at those interactions as far as how they are going to choose a mate. It's just what happens. Those are mm -hmm. our models. And so, you know, if you if you're generous with praise, if you if you you know, share and, and more than just, you know, that, that stereotypical, um, Oh, you're so pretty, you, you know, that the, those superficial, um, you know, things that just focus on, um, on that outward appearance, um, you know, talk about how smart they are and, and how good they are at figuring things out and how strong they are, all of those things, because that's what we want our daughters to look for when, when they're looking for other people um, to be, you know, have important roles in their life is they want people that's going to look at them as a whole person. And so we have to show them what that praise feels like so that they will feel comfortable receiving that from other people. Right. It's much, it's much better if they hear you say, honey, you, I'm really impressed the way you, the way you overcame that, the way you dealt with that, yeah. rather than saying, this is how you deal with it. Right. Okay. Um, and as girls get older, there's going to come a time, believe me, please believe me, there's going to come a time where your lovely little daughter who's been very close to you for years suddenly doesn't want to have anything to do with you. That's going to happen during the teenage years. Yeah. But even in the teenage years, they still need your praise. Okay, yeah. A little bit different, but they still need it. They, they they don't act like they do, but they do. So keep keep gushing, keep keep complimenting them on their accomplishments. Yeah. Um, the, number four is is something I think that dads have a really difficult time, yeah, with this time. Is hard. Mm -hmm. and that is getting involved with her activities. Right. Um, you know, you know, and, and I don't know how what people will respond to this, but you know, dance, dance is a sport. You know, I don't know, I don't know how many uh, of you have have watched and looked at what people go through, and and I'm we're talking about this with girls because most. Um, most dancers are, are, are girls, um, but it is hard work. And, yeah. and, you know, and we, as dads, we need to go to those recitals. We need to go to those, those events. We need to be supportive. If, if she's playing mm -hmm. softball, if she's playing chess, if she's, you know, wants to be on the football team, if she, whatever it is that she's doing, we need to be involved in that um, mm -hmm. because, that's her life that becomes those are parts of who she is and parts of who she's going to become and her identity and we should want to be a part of that we should be want to be what should want to be involved in that and watch her evolution as she grows and gets more competent and stronger and, and better in the, some of these activities right with with your daughters um it's 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 not really sufficient to just have these little quiet, uh, quick conversations. You know, you need to get more involved. You need to immerse yourself mm -hmm. in their lives in some way so that you spend uh, time together. You were a, a soccer coach, okay? Mm -hmm. And you spent a lot of time with your nieces, your nephews, your sons, your daughters. Um, you need to have that long periods of time because those are the rich discussions yeah. that occur when you spend a lot of time together. The rich discussions don't occur in two or three minute segments. Well, and, and Richard, you know this too, that there is nothing better than a discussion with your daughter about her interests. Right, yeah. Um, I know, I know your, your daughter's played a lot of tennis. And mm -hmm. you know when you think about being able to sit down and talk to them about Venus and Serena Williams, right. you know you know, you're involved in what they were doing. And so you could sit down, you could talk to them about these idols that they have. Um, and, and you're not just talking about it with the, you know, the clips from, you know, whatever, where you, oh, I saw a thing today about how good Serena Williams is. No, you, you can sit down and you can talk to her about it because you're involved and you're engaged with her life that way. 
it, it makes it, it makes those discussions so much more um, meaningful for both of you. Mm, that's right. Um, so, so we have to be involved with that with those things. Right, that you're involved in their activities. Yeah, it validates them. Um, here's another one that um, many parents make this mistake, and I think dads maybe more than moms. Um, it's called being an ally, and by that we mean you have to be supportive, but be careful. Be careful that you don't uh, point out their possible contribution or fault. For example, um, frequently your children will come home and they will say, "Well, so and so, um, my teacher did this. My teacher said this to me." Mm -hmm. And the parent will say, well, blah, 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 and then say, but what did you do to make the teacher angry? Okay. Mm -hmm. Or what did you do that had somebody react that way? I would leave that part out of it. You, your daughter already knows. She already has enough critics. She already has enough people telling her what she's doing wrong. You're the ally. You don't have to point that out. You listen. You listen attentively. And you understand it from her perspective, but don't point out her weaknesses. Everybody else is doing that. Right. Yeah, I, I think that I, to me, the, the, the important piece of this is you're listening, you're, you're empathizing. And then that next step of, um, so what do you think you should do about that? Right. Um, how mm -hmm. do you think you can make that better? You know, right. supporting again, being that ally as she is then problem solving through it to say, well, you know, I know I really, um, you know, the teacher got really upset with me and you say, you know, well, what do you think you should do? To, you know, how do you think you should, could address this or fix this? Mm -hmm. And she says, if she says, I don't know, I don't know what to do, then you can offer some, some advice and some support. If she says, you know, well, I think that I should, you know, tomorrow when I get to school, I could go talk to her and apologize and tell her that, you know what? I think that's a great idea. You know, yeah. um, you know, and if you if you'd like for me to, you know, d be there to help her do anything, you know, you let me know. But man, I can't wait to hear what happens when you when you when you apologize to her that way. Right. But putting that onus on her, you're not letting her know I will solve your problems for you, um, because that's not being an ally. That's being um, right. That, that's, that's being the the, the the controller. Right. Being an ally is you know. I'm not going to point out everything that you're doing wrong. I'm going to help you figure this out um, mm -hmm. so that you can, you can grow and become, you know, more competent with it. And, and that said, the fact that your daughter came to you, right. It's the first victory. Okay. That you're on the right track because your daughter's right. coming to you with an important thing. Um, and you're not solving the problem for her. You're not going to be a snowplow. You're not going to, you're not going to jump in and, Mm -hmm. and and be the player you're going to stay on the sidelines and let her work through that problem and, right. and you support her you're the ally who's going to support her but it's her work to do right? um modeling healthy relationships as a father you you have to be aware that you are being observed and watched and you you must do the things that you want your daughter to see and one of those is you have to treat her mother the way you want her to be treated, not her mother to be treated. You want to treat her mother the way you want your daughter to be treated. Right. You want your daughter to see how it should be right. so that when she gets in a romantic relationship, that she has a clear picture of how she expects to be treated by her partner. Absolutely. And and I think that, and, and again, this is important for, for boys too, because you want your boys to see this is how you, you treat your partner. Right. Um, but as this is where we get into that, you know, the, the generational and the, the, the repeated pattern of, of abuse right. and, mm -hmm. and, and harm, because when, you know, we, we often say, you know, girls, grow up and, and marry their father and, and boys marry their mother. You know, right. they marry people who are similar and have some of those similar characteristics. And so if your daughter sees you mistreating her mother, um, even if they're divorced, even if your parents, the parents are divorced, if you are continue to treat her mother in, in ways that are damaging, 
she's going to, that she's still going to take that on as well this is the way that you know it's okay for a partner to treat you know treat you like this and and so we we have to step back and step away from this idea that um do as i say not as i do because right. they're going to they're going to do what you're modeling for them that's right even if you're divorced they're still going to be watching okay yeah. and and you, you have to be very very careful uh, because you are being watched very closely and she's going to internalize that. And you're being heard. You know, the next one is watching your language. You know, when you Absolutely. when you say things about her mother or when you when you say thing, things about women in general, um, you know, this is where we are not going to get into to politics in this podcast. But, you know, the, the way that I hear some the, the way that we hear some people talking about, you know, Kamala Harris. Yeah, it, it's you know, there she's being insulted because she's a woman right. in cases. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, what do you, what do you think your daughter is going to hear when, when, when you, she hears people say she's a woman, she's not capable of doing this, or she's a woman, she's not able to, to do that. Well, I'm a woman. So does that, that means that I'm not capable of doing those right. things. I'm mm -hmm. not going to be capable of being, you know, making decisions okay. and those kind of things. Um, you know, a, a lot of, and, and I, it makes me insane. Um, and again, we're not, I'm trying to avoid going into it too much, but I, I've seen too many videos recently of, you know, um, re religious figures, you know, in, in, in high positions, you know, saying things like, you know, women shouldn't be able to make decisions. Women shouldn't be able to, um, I heard a recent person talking about how women shouldn't, we should go back to before women were able to vote um, and that yeah. men should make the decision. And, and what are we teaching our daughters and, and, and girls about that, that they're not capable of making decisions. So we, we have to really be careful what we're saying because that language, you can't take it back. You can't, right. you can't undo that. Right. Yeah. I'm going to stop before I get into that too much. Um, well, no, no, you're right, because on the one hand, we want to encourage our daughters to be whatever they want to be, whether it's a mathematician or a scientist or an astronaut or a jet pilot. So on the one hand, we want to encourage them to, to be fully engaged. But then we have these other messages that, well, you're a woman, so you can't. Right. Oh, well, you women can. I mean, right. you're not going to make you can't make those comments about other women and then say, oh, well, baby, honey, you're, you're different. No, she's not, gonna, right. she's not going to see that. Yeah, that's right. If she, it, that's right, and so those are dangerous messages, and you have to make sure that you're not using any of that stereotypical language um, when you talk about your daughter, when you talk to your daughter. Um, speaking of talking to your daughter, there are these difficult topics. Yeah, um, sex, drugs, alcohol, um, relationships. I can't stress enough that you need to create a safe environment where your daughters are able to talk to you about right. any topic that there is. Right. Um, they may not volunteer readily or easily, right. but they have to be able to come to you. And if they're afraid, if, if, if there's any hesitation at all, that you might react negatively yeah. or impatiently or in a dictatorial way, they're not going to come to you, they're, but they're going to go somewhere. And somewhere scares me because I don't know what somewhere is and I don't know who someone is. These topics, they have, they, they need to be able to come to you. Uh, uh, absolutely. And, and so, and it kind of, this kind of, to me, incorporates some of the other ones that we've talked about where, you know, being a good listener and, and not, solving problems but being an ally so so when when they come to you with these different things and you know and dads it's okay to ask about some of these things right. you want to ask about them again you can't ask about them and then jump down their throats about it and then expect them to answer you the next time you know you have to you have to be mindful about that kind of stuff but you want to ask because like you said if if they're afraid to talk to you about it they're going to talk to somebody about it and my God, if if they're talking to other people at school, they're going to get dangerous advice. They're going to get inaccurate or dangerous yeah. information. 
Yeah. So, so we have to be open and, and mindful about how we respond to some of those things. And, and, you know, and one of the differences today is we do have this, this internet. Okay. And kids are communicating with other people and they always assume that they're communicating with somebody their age. Right. And you know that that's not always true. And if they have a buddy out there somewhere, Mm -hmm. uh, they're going to ask their buddy about this stuff. Okay. And who knows who they're really talking to. And so it's, it's your obligation as a father to, to keep that, to make sure that door is open and stays open. Mm -hmm. And you have to do everything you can to make sure that you are a safe place for your daughter to bring whatever it is. Right. That's your obligation to make that happen. Not hers. Absolutely. Um, the, the ninth one is show your love. <laughs> um, it's like praise. You have to show your praise, okay? When they're two and three and four, you show your love one way. When they're 14, 15, 16, you show it a different way, okay? So it has to be age-appropriate expression. Your three-year-old can sit in your lap. Your 15-year-old probably isn't going to sit in your lap. But you have to, at each developmental stage, you have to show your love because even if it feels like they hate you, they don't, and they still need to know that you think they're important and that you love them, and you have to show them and tell them. Absolutely, and, and that goes to the tenth when the, the last one that we have, and, and that is to let her know how important she is to you. And I think that that's what all of these things do, you know. Okay the the way that you know that your partner cares about you is that they listen to you and that what mm-hmm. what troubles you're having matter and and they're important and so how are you going to show that show your daughter that she's important to you you're going to listen and you're going to let her know that you know hey everyone makes mistakes sometimes but i'm still here for you and i still love you and i still want to help you and um you know we have to show that support and that um you know, all these other things that we've talked mm-hmm. about with, you know, um, being involved in her activities and showing that praise and, you know, her voice matters and what she has to say and her opinions are important. All of those things show that you love her and that she's important. And, and it's so critical that we convey that message. Um, because again, as you said a minute ago, when we don't, they're going to find that somewhere else. Um, that that to me is the biggest fear, right? Because when kids don't feel love at home, they find love somewhere. Exactly. Yeah, and that's my biggest fear is that if they can't, if they don't feel that from you, they're going to. You're absolutely right. They're going to find it somewhere. Okay, yeah. but you want them to find you. You want them to always have, regardless of what age they are, that they always have this feeling that. I can ask my dad about this. I'm going to talk to my dad about this. I, I can talk to my father about this. He'll know what to do. Um, and even they'll invite their friends over and say, well, you can talk to my dad about that. That he, you know, he, He'll talk to you about marijuana. He'll talk to you about sex. He'll talk to you about drugs. Uh, he will, you know, and I won't get in trouble. No, 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 no. You can talk to my dad about this stuff. And that's, what, that's what, how you want your daughters to feel. Because if they're not talking to you, they're going to find somebody else to talk to. And absolutely. Absolutely. So there again, we, we will we'll have some information in the show notes so that you can read some more about this stuff. But, you know, it, it's it's a challenge. Again, all of these things are important with all of our kids, but certainly important between the father and fathers and daughters. Um, it, it is a as so many relationships are, it's a unique relationship that requires some special attention and, and nuance to it but um we we do wish you all good luck with that um and obviously and certainly yeah if you have questions uh just give us a call you know we're it's not an easy task um it's threading a needle for sure and um but it is possible um but but we have to we have to be available Our, our daughters have to be able to come to us absolutely all right well that's it for today until next time stay happy stay healthy and forget to be afraid